Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're watching One Piece episodes 186 and 187. Um, and guys, I don't have a clue what's going to happen here. I do not have a clue. Uh, like, what's, how do we stop an L here? What's going to happen next? What we know is Luffy has had the big golden ball grafted onto his arm. He was thrown off the Ark Maxim. Last we saw of him, he's trying to regroup with Robin and the, the gang. But how, how are we going to do that? And... How's he going to get like back up into the sky with that ball on him? Um, we got an MVP performance in the last episode from Sanji, who had an epic moment. He saved, um, and give props to Usopp as well. Usopp and Nami, you know, taking on an L, facing them down, you know, the courage. But yeah, Sanji uh, took took some serious damage to save Usopp and Nami, get them down uh, off the arc maximum. So as it stands just now, he ha he is unconscious on top of the arc maximum. He Sanji is the only one who's still up there, I believe. But he's been zapped, so he's down and out. Um, everyone else down on the ground. I'm hoping we're going to get them to, uh, to regroup, you know, try and regroup, get ourselves together. The only good thing that happened because of Sanji uh, is he damaged the arc maximum. So maybe it's going to come down a bit and give us a chance to, you know, get an L before he gets away. So, guys, I'm just going to jump in. You know, I don't know where we're going here, um, but hopefully these episodes will shed some light on the direction we're going to take uh, and like try and figure it away, get this golden ball off of Luffy, get him back into the action because we need. But the looks of it, because of Luffy's ability uh, to take the attacks from Anel, we need Luffy to be back in full action here. We need them, we need this ball off his arm because he can't do much if he can't move basically. But yeah, guys, let's just go. Let's go episode 186. We'll talk in between. We'll talk at the end like we usually do. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to watch me go through One Piece for the first time and geek out about it. Everyone that comes back and uh, likes the videos, comments, all that stuff, thank you all. I appreciate it very, very much. Let's go. One Piece episode 186. Let's do it. Oh, yep. And L realises it was Sanji that done the damage. Yeah, you got the last laugh on you. Yeah, yeah, go. Go try and fix your gears. Oh my god, Usopp. Oh, Usopp. Nice, buddy. Oh, you've done well. You've done well there, Usopp. Good work. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Usopp. Props to Usopp, you know. <laughs> yeah. Bad aim right off, but... Uh, uh, I respect Usopp for that there. That was, that was really good thinking, to get Sanji out. I thought Sanji was going to be stranded up there. Good. Nami's got them. Yeah. Yeah. See this man's wounds. He's earned it. Yeah, get Usopp out of there. <laughs> Even without electric power. The one power from 200 jet dials. I got it from my home. Oh, fuck up, right. Okay. Right, so he's got a right. He had a contingency plan there for something like this happening. Oh, here comes Luffy. And I shall carry in Pierre. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh yeah, he's just wondering about these thunder clouds. Because <clears throat> he wants to destroy the island. That's all he's really caring about at this point. Yeah, oh, he's noticed Sanji's away. Oh. So we're just going for it then. Going for up the beans. Oh, I just spotted them. There's, yep, yeah, there's Robin Luffy. Good. Oh. Uh, yeah, Robin, catch them. 
Nice. Luffy, are you going down again, bud? No. <laughs> Do you know where our navigate? Ice is coming in really handy here. Oh, no, you your mantra, Isa. Yeah, exactly. There's only one voice up there. You can figure out where Nami is for us. Oh, she's here. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. This is good. We're all reunited. Just Luffy trying to claim this beanstalk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've all been taken out, Usopp, exactly. They're all fried, man. I'll go after them when they Oh, Nami, you're going to go after them? Get to the Mary. Okay. So Nami's going to go with Luffy. I'm glad that all these people are uh, coming to their senses now. The Shandians and the people from Skypea. They're all finally escaping. Oh, is that Isa's... Isa's mum? Yeah. Ice is doing okay. Get this evacuation underway. I wonder if it's actually, like, I wonder if he's actually going to destroy it. Because they're going to actually destroy it or are they going to get to an island time? Because they're going through the trouble here of evacuating all these people. Oh, man. Here we go. Is that starting? The destruction beginning here. Looks like it. Oh, man. Yeah. There you go. Baldwin's going flying and everything. Oh, dear. Yeah. He's just casually sitting there. No, again. Oh, dear. What does that mean? Oh. Oh. Okay, right. That's destruction right there. Yeah. Yeah, get that guy on that boat. Oh, he's looking at the great warrior Calgara. A statue. You can tell that Wiper really respects that statue. Oh, Wiper's up. Oh. Wipers, I can't believe he's up. You know, what tenacity from Wiper. I hope Zoro and Chopper wake up as well. And Ganfall. Oh, Zoro. Yes. Zoro's back. Oh, Ganfall, right. Okay. Excellent. Everyone's back in the game here. Let's do it. Oh, Nami's actually going up the... Jack and Jack on our waiver. Okay, Nami. I like it. The bravery again from Nami. Oh, man. Look at that face. He's crackpot, man. Yeah. Come on, Luffy. Right. Uh, that was a, it was a quick episode. I would say, though, that episode, there was a lot of silence in it. You know, there was a lot of, like, there was a lot of parts of that episode where it was just, you know, quite long shots of what was happening and the people looking up to the sky and stuff. So there wasn't that much dialogue, I don't believe, um, in this episode, but it served the purpose of what you needed to. It uh, did the thing where it's like, right, let's get this bit, let's use an episode just to get everybody reunited on the same page so that all the characters know this is what's happening. Um, set Luffy into motion like right Luffy going for the final showdown while well, everybody gets to grips and we get a check in with everybody round about to see what's happening with the destruction and stuff so we get to see the people from Sky Pier uh, evacuate we get to see uh, the Shandians witness it and evacuate we get to see what's happening with Conus with uh, you know everybody that's round about that has to look up and see this destruction taking place and it looks awesome you know when he said that there and all the you know the boats come down that was that was great it is it's a very 
uh, you know, kind of intimidating view for a villain to have caused this and to basically have the power to destroy. Uh, you saw like when it was hitting Sky Pier, you seen the buildings just breaking apart, flying off and stuff. Good stuff. It really kind of builds up how powerful Anel is. Um, and the anger in which Luffy had, you know, as he's charging back up to basically be like, nah, it's not going to go your way. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it was a very transitional episode. Uh, like, after the ones we had, it was like that, that you know, it was bang, 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 non-stop action a few, stop, few uh, episodes before because we had the fights, we had the rescue, everything was happening. I believe this episode was a kind of like, right, Let's turn now, we're, we're approaching the end of the arc, let's use this episode to kind of steer everything in the right place, get every, all the characters in place for the finale kind of thing, so that they're either all together, they're starting to regain consciousness so that they know what's happening and we can, we can do something. I don't know what the Straw Hats are going to do, like down below, are they going to try and go and get on the Merry? Are they going to stay there and tr wait for Luffy? I don't know. The way they were talking, Nami was saying there as if they should go and maybe try and get the Mary, which is a smart idea because if these, you know, things are coming down, what if the Mary gets damaged? But I don't actually, I think that's, uh, Conus, Conus is with the Mary right now, so I don't know how we, how that would come about. Is she going to bring it round and we'll meet her there or do we need to go to the place it was? I don't know. Just don't let Zoro decide which direction we go back to the Mary, because <laughs> that'll be a disaster. Uh, yeah, but good moments. We got a great moment from Usopp. You know, I was praising him in the last episode because I was like, right, he said to Nami about don't, you know, don't uh, belittle the, the sacrifice and the resolve that Sanji just showed there. So we have to go, she was saying we have to go back for him and he was like, no, no, we have to, he made this sacrifice for us. If we went back and got caught again, it'll just ruin his you know, what he did there, but all that time, Usopp had the contingency plan of keeping the hook attached, so that he can go back and get Sanji when the coast is clear, I love it, I love that from Usopp, you know, look out for it, look out for each other, absolutely fine, that's what I love about this series, is these, the bonds that these uh, characters have with each other, and you see it, you see it, it's so natural, the way it's grown, the way these people have been attached to each other and the friendship has developed, you know, it's just, it it does it without, you know, in some series, they need to tell you, they need to tell the, the audience, by the way, these guys are best friends, you know, these, these guys are really close, are really good friends. In this series, they don't need to do that because it's such a natural progression. You see it happening. You see the bonds forming. You see the kind of, brotherly rival atmosphere between Sanji and Zoro just developing naturally. You see the kind of uh, antics and the bond that uh, Nami and Usopp have from being the two kind of normal people on the crew. You see these things forming. You can see Robin as the newest member of the crew. You can see her forming attachments already to everybody. Even though I laugh that she calls them all by either their occupation or a trait that they have, you know, it's the cook, it's the swordsman, it's the navigator, long nose for Usopp, which I feel bad for him about, but it's, it's that way of, you can see that, it, you can see that even Robin, who was in that, you know, organisation and stuff, and was came from the kind of, the shadiest background, I would say so far, eh, of anybody that's joined, you can see her, forming these bonds you can see that she is becoming really attached to the crew and i love that i love it so so much because as that natural progression it's not beating it down your throat you know like oh these guys really like each other because we're telling you they do you know it's like that way of um naruto when you had naruto and you had a uh, naruto sasuke and sakura and it didn't feel like they were like they they kept telling you. By the way, these these guys are really close friends, you know. And then when you watch the series, you're like, from what standpoint, you know? It's just it didn't feel like a natural thing. It just felt weird that Naruto and Sasuke were 
like so friendly, even though what we watched was what happened. Whereas in like I was like, right, so a lot of stuff's happening off screen then that we're not seeing. Like you got to see things from the first couple of missions in Naruto where you're like, right, you can see a bond forming. But then Sasuke buggered off and then it was as if, oh, these guys are like brothers. <laughs> and you're like, okay, right, fair enough. But this is, it does it so much better. Just so, so much better. And you see so many other series like that that do it off screen. They do it off screen and then you just, you come back and it's like, oh, by the way, Couple of years have passed. Just trust us. A great bond's been formed here. You know, um, guys. It's the writing in this series is just different class, right? I love it. I love it so much, and I want to see where we're going to go next. I don't know what this next episode is going to be. Is it going to be Luffy trying to get to the? Because he mentioned in the episode there that to Robin, he's like, "Listen, I know that he's wanting the golden bell, doesn't he?" It's at the top of this um, giant jack, right? Robin says, yeah, it's the only place it could be. So Luffy knows what NL's going for. So that's where we're heading here. Like It's a race to the Golden Bell, basically. So yeah, let's just jump in. See what's going to happen. Episode 187. Let's go. Is that what the detestable Shandoriel Warren? Oh... So, okay. Yeah, so he's rubbing it in as he's destroying these places. Yeah. So there goes the Shandians. Yeah. Their village is gone. Yeah, exactly. And it was the Sky Pier people that had warned you. Remember that? Oh, Wipers seen, the, seen that the village got destroyed. Just, oh, we're we going back to this. Okay, good, good. I was so worried they were going to leave this hanging. What was the other reason? Good work, Helga has a very close friend. Okay. Yeah. Mate, Mate Helga, 400 years ago, his name was. Oh, don't, don't do it again. Oh. Noland? What? Monster of Shandra? What is, is this a flashback to 400 years ago? Oh, please tell me that's the case. Oh, is that a, a great warrior Calgara? Oh my god, I cannot believe we're getting to see this here. This is fantastic. And he has a connection with Noland. Of course, because Jaya, City of Gold. Oh. Noland. He, he's got a much bigger stature than he had in that uh, storybook, I'll tell you. Oh, man. No one looks like an absolute machine. I can be of use, so. Oh, so this is the girl they're going to sacrifice? Yeah, her mum's crying. Oh. Oh, yeah. They've got the. So the Shandians have the wings even before they went to the sky, then? Yeah. Good order, Calgary. Yeah, this boy has it. Be like you someday. Yeah, but he's got this disease. Don't want to die. Yeah, it must be terrifying. Oh man, he's here. I can't. I, I can't believe we're getting this story here. I'm so happy about this. Oh. Oh, the other South Birds. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now you can all hear the bell. He wasn't making up. Oh, man. And we're going to find out that all these stories were true. He didn't make anything up. 
Oh, no one's found that boy that was talking to Calgary. Oh, man. Oh, uh, he's going to go back and warn the village. Inject this lad and all of it. Oh, there's no one to have a cure for this disease. Okay, that could be a game changer. Right. Oh my god, and it's the... <laughs> I didn't even realise that there. It's the sacrificial altar that we were on with the Mary. Oh, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Oh, that's for the sacrifice? Oh, it's the snake. Oh, so this snake was, it's not a thing that was in the sky. It's, it was native to Jaya. I think it's a god. Oh, is that, oh, no one? Oh. Oh my god, right, okay. Noland is an absolute savage. The damage that snake took in the sky that we were fighting, and he just chopped that head off like it was nothing. God killer. God killer Noland. I love it. Oh, he's... Let's see if that girl there. Oh, but now he's going to have to convince these people that... Uh, he can save them. Oh, yeah, look at the crew. They're like, oh, no, he's done something again. He killed God. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and explore. The oh, my God. Are we going to get Nolan versus Calgary here? Oh, yes. No place to criticise at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, look at the, sh the, the Shandians, they're like, how can this guy fight against Calgara? Use that knife to take your life. Oh, so he's throwing the dagger to her? A sacrifice made to save the village, crying because she won't. Oh, if you know, shame. Come on. Oh, don't, don't do it. Yeah, good, Nolan, good. Oh, he just got stabbed, didn't he? Okay. Right. I want to see where this is going to go because the chief and the Shandian village said that they were friends. So, this is going to... Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn, but it's going to turn. These ceremonies. The triumphs of all the great men before us. Right. Yeah, that's an insult to all the adventurers in recent. Yeah. Whoever said it. Oh, man. Nolan. If you vow, if your God's lying, if you always lives, then wouldn't they contemptfully? Yes, Nolan. Speak some sense into them. Oh, God. The fact that I know that this man is now considered a joke. And a liar. I'm going to be really sad at the end of this flashback, I think. Because he looks like... He's nothing like that. Try it. Oh, that's the, the chief. From this time. <laughs> if you will have until tomorrow evening. To... Right, okay, so he's going to give Nolan the chance. Oh, is she interested in Nolan? A renowned explorer and a botanist. Oh, so he knows about plants and stuff? And finds research new plants here. Okay. He's too good natured. And his biggest flaw is he can't ignore stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, look, you can tell his crew love him. His crew trust him. See, they can save our village. There's no harm in waiting. Yeah, that's a wise chief, you know. Let, let, let him try, what's the worst that could happen? I do not have the power to hear the gods' voices. 
I do know when a man is speaking earnest words. Okay. Good village chief. Nice. Oh, oh, that's right. They injected this boy. And he's better, he's saying. So, there you go. Nolan's already changed the mind of one person here. Oh, man. Oh. A corner tree. Okay, so he needs a specific tree to make the cure. Oh, man. I, I'm so invested in this. Oh, an earthquake? Oh, no way. Is this when the, the island got shot up? Is this the, the knock-up stream? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no one's got... You get caught in it. Seems the gods have given you a crushing blow. In that case, these gods aren't great at all. Right. You don't even have the strength to kill a single person. <laughs> Oh man, Nolan's a badass man. I I love Nolan. Yeah, I think I'll see this through. God, yeah. What's he got? Oh no, don't come on. Right, I was not expecting a flashback of Nolan to get an I'm on black Nolan flashback and Great Warrior Calgara, two that I was curious about, two characters based on. Just based on word of mouth from what Cricket and that was saying and then what the uh, Shandians were saying about Calgara. I cannot believe that we're getting to see this. I am a 400 year old flashback. Oh man. And it was just, it was that way of, right, we're going to find out the truth of what Nolan was like and how how he got deemed a liar. Are we going to find out, are we going to see right through to that point? And are we going to see how how it played out and how these two become friends? Because the chief said to Young Wiper, you know, Great Warrior Calgary, his biggest regret, he had a close friend, and then they said the name. And when he said Mon Black Nolan there, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I, I love this. I love the connection that this has here. And oh, I... Uh, this series is so, so good, man. The way they can tie this in. I was so worried when we left Jaya, right? When we left Jaya and I was like, oh, are we not going to explore that? Are we not going to explore uh, the, the Nolan story and about the City of Gold and about, you know, cricket and get some resolution for cricket? The way they tied it into Sky Pier and now... The flashback which ties these things together, which is tying all these people together, you know. Before before it goes to, into the sky, I mean like Jaya and Chandra, like that connects it to Cricket and those down below, and then the Shandians and Wiper's admiration for Calgara. We're going to see, because the way it's been painted right now, Calgara looks like the villain. Right, the way that Nolan showed up and the way Calgara is treating him and the way he was treating that girl at the sacrificial altar telling her to stab herself and stuff, he seems like the villain here. But I know that they're going to end up in friends because of what the chief said. So I'm interested to see where the turn's going to happen, you know? <sighs> because Calgara's, obviously Calgara's the only one that knows that Nolan is trapped here by this earthquake. And... He has a time, he has to get to the village by a certain time to cure people or his crew gets killed and that girl gets killed as well. So, oh man, it's... It makes me wonder as well with a the snake then, right? So, it makes sense then because I was wondering why is the snake crying when it got to Shandora as well? So, obviously, the snakes were native to Jaya, Right? And when that one, the there's obviously more than one, because we have one that's uh, now there, that they call the Lord of the Sky, but the, the one that Nolan killed, they called it God Kashi. So the Shandians believed it was a god, right? And so now when it's been blown up, I don't know if the snake's maybe been blown up and the snake's not seen 
uh, Shandora for a while because the way the island got blown up and it couldn't find it. I don't know, uh, but I'm interested to see how this all ties in. I, uh, the st <laughs> oh man, the, the writing this story is must have been such an intricate, you know, I, I can imagine Oda uh, trying to weave all this together here and it's just it's so masterfully done. This could be like a standalone. I know people have been saying it to me, but if it does feel like it, you know, it could be from Jaya, Jaya and Sky Pia together could be its own thing. And I would love it, you know, and I cannot wait to see how this flashback plays out, you know, and it looks like, oh, we're getting a couple of episodes of Nolan, and I, I, I can't wait for it. I, because I was thinking that I was like, oh man, usually every arc we get a bit of a flashback, you know, um, because like what all the ones with we got a flashback for most of the straw. In fact, all the straw hats, even though like the likes of uh, Usopp's and Zoro's were a bit, you know, more underplayed, and it was just a kind of like origin story kind of thing, but. You know, Baratier, the flashback. Arlong Park, the flashback. You know, uh, when we got to drum, the flashback. And then, obviously, we got bits of flashback of Vivi and our, like, all the stuff with Baroque works and stuff. So we did get like some aspects of it there. But the flashbacks were used in the arcs before to build up Alabasta. And now this here, and I'm like, right, I can't see anybody... Because I don't think the likes of Conus is going to join the crew, you know, because she's not had, like, it, it looked like Vivi was going to join. Vivi had a huge impact, and she was with the crew for a while, and she had that bond and that dynamic. They haven't done that with Conus. I do appreciate Conus's character, and I think that she is a good character, but she's not formed that bond, and she's not a character that I'm sitting here going, oh, we need to take Conus with us if we leave. I don't think she's going to join the crew, so I didn't see... And, like, I didn't, what flashback could she have? If there was going to be any flashback in this arc, I thought it was going to be an L. I thought we were going to get an L flashback of what happened at Burka and why he's doing the things he's doing. Uh, but I'm, I'm so happy with this. This is amazing. A 400-year-old flashback to something I was so curious about. You know, Cricket and his ancestor. We're going to see... Oh, man. And I, it annoys me that in that picture book, they have the like, little goofy drawing of him and like the Nolan the Liar and stuff. And he's a machine. He's an absolute machine. Look how jacked he is. He's taking down sea monsters. He's, you know, slicing that. That shows you his strength. When, he's, when he took that snake's head off, that was to basically tell us, look, listen, this guy is really strong because look at the hassle everybody had with that snake on uh, Skypea. You know, so the fact that he's that strong and then Calgara was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him shows you how strong Calgara must be because the villagers were surprised and they're saying, this man is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Calgara. So they were surprised by that. So they obviously regard Calgara as like a monster. And now you have these two. Oh, man, how's it going to play out? How's it going to play out? Because you got, I'm so happy that that young boy there told Calgara that he'd been cured, right? So that maybe, like, make Calgara think maybe this guy isn't uh, lying and trying to harm the village. If he's already cured somebody, maybe he's telling the truth and he can we can save everybody. Oh, I can't wait to see where this goes. I can't, I want, to, here's what I want, right? From this flashback, from this flashback, what I want is, uh, obviously, to find out the truth of what happened with Nolan, like how he got branded a liar and how he died. Because I don't, like, what was it? I can't remember what the thing was in the storybook. I don't know if he got, he was, he got, he got like imprisoned and then killed. Something like that. For like lying about the city of gold. So I want to see if that is what actually happened, right? And then I want to see the Poneglyph. I want to see the Poneglyph and what the Shandians thought of it, like, what they think of it, and what... Because, obviously, they, in this place, in this flashback, they're ringing the Golden Bell. They're the ones ringing it, because it's there, in Shandara. So, I want to see that. The fact that they're living in these huts in this village, 
I want to see what the golden, like, Shandor are like. Is, is it hidden there? And they're protecting it? But they don't live there. So they're using this village as a kind of, like, front. So I want to see what the city of gold looks like in its glory before, you know, an elf stripped all the gold away. I want to see that. And, you know, I just, that, those, are the, those are the questions. Those are the things I want from this flashback. To see the city of gold in its glory. To see the Poneglyph. Um, and to see if the Shandians, if that's what they're protecting and what they think about it. Uh, and then, you know, resolution to the Nolan story. And, okay. Right, I'm so ha I'm so happy about this, and the fact that a uh, wiper, wiper in this new generation of Shandians all know about Nolan as well. Then, if they know the story of Calgara, and the chief has told them about Calgara, he's saying, "Oh, he's, he's his friend, a uh, Mont Blanc Nolan." You know, uh, it's the f oh, such good good storytelling, guys. I. I'm I'm going to stop talking about it there. That, that was amazing. Like, the first episode I thought was quite a, a quiet episode, a bit of a transitional episode where there wasn't much happening. That second episode, you know, I'm like, oh, man, I'm in. Like, they've got me here. What's going to happen in this flashback? But, yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, please join me on the, the next one uh, where we'll be continuing this flashback. And if you haven't subscribed, so uh, you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you guys for uh, watching with me. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. We'll be finding out more about Moonblank Noland. Thanks guys. See you then.